Good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's listening session, which is listening session day four. And our trainer for today is Mr. Shafiq Mohammed. These are a few instructions for you all. Make sure you have a stable internet connection and a noise-free environment for which we recommend you to use your earphones for the best experience. If you want to speak, please raise your hand and wait for the instructor's prompt. Respect your instructor, your classmates, and yourself. Be respectful and professional, and do not write anything inappropriate in the chat box. Now, these are the three memberships which are available for you all at Ubergrad. You instantly become a bronze member when you register yourself on the Ubergrad website. Moreover, you have silver and the gold memberships available with additional features. Uh, so for getting yourselves enrolled for or upgraded to any of these silver or gold member you can just drop in your details in the chat box or you can just go to the website of ubergrad and directly get yourselves upgraded there now at ubergrad you get free profile evaluation which is done by our experts which consists of comprehensive evaluation university shortlisting post recommendations country recommendations which are made according to a student's requirements and career objects future aspirations your academic strengths and such more moreover recommendations reports is also customized according to a student's profile and requirements yeah. and a doubt clearance Moreover, we have doubt clearance regarding the study abroad process, which consists of shortlisting, application, scholarships, etc. Moving ahead, we have these live classes, which goes on on a daily basis. So firstly, we have free GRE live classes, which goes on from Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 9.30, which is an online class, and it's a two-month course. Moreover, we have free live Duolingo classes, which goes on from Monday to Friday, 6.30 to 7.30, which is also an online class, and it's a two-week course. So for getting yourselves enrolled for any of these, you can directly go to the website of Ubergrad and get yourselves enrolled. Moving ahead, you can upgrade yourselves to gold member for just rupees 499 and you get benefits worth rupees more than a 50k so the other consultants they provide you with live ielts coaching live gre coaching university selection and applications sop and lor writing services visa support and loan support all these you get at more than a 50k but at ubergrad you just get it for rupees 499 so in order to upgrade yourself to this gold member membership you can just go on the website of ubergrad and directly get yourselves upgraded there moving ahead these are some of the achievements of the students who got themselves enrolled at ubergrad now i'll quickly show you the website of ubergrad Okay, so you can go on ubergrad.com and on the website itself, there's a lot of information which is available related to various countries, universities, courses, examinations. So you can go and explore a lot and all your requirements and needs can be fulfilled over there itself. And you'll get a clear picture of all the uh, things that um, for which you have a doubt related to countries, universities courses and the examinations as I mentioned before. So you also get free profile evaluation and talk to a counselor option at Ubergrad. Then we have test preparation store, which consists of live IELTS, live GRE and live Duolingo classes, which I mentioned earlier. And in addition to this, you also get additional services and blogs are uploaded on a daily basis. So you can just go and explore a lot of information on the website itself. Now, in order to make yourselves available to the handouts and the recordings of the daily um, sessions that are taking place, just go on to your name, my test preparation, go on to IELTS Academy Comprehensive Live Classes course, it will take you to this window. It will take you to this window. So for example, yesterday was listening session three, listening session day three. So just go on to listening day three. And over here, the recording of day three listening session would be available. Direct, uh, just click on that. You'll get the handout. 
and the recording as well that is 2.3.8 listening day 3 recording just click on that and you'll get the access to the 25th october that is yesterday's listening session day 3 recording so and also i'll be sharing the telegram channel link with you all in the chat box just go uh, to the telegram channel join the link and you'll get a lot of information over there as well so yeah that's it from my side now i would like to hand over the platform to shafiq sir so sir are you there yes i'm here good evening sir. i'm i'm good evening thank you so much okay guys uh that was quite informative and you know you can get a lot of uh, goodies from overgrad website i think so that's really great uh yes let's uh jump into the listening session uh today is day four let me share the screen now so I, oh, I hope everyone is doing really well after the Sarah. Okay. Great. So today we're going to do um, a flow chart. Okay. So yesterday we were doing uh, some, you know, um, something related to um, form filling. We also have done, you know, um, table, isn't it? So we'll do today a flow chart. So it's just like fill in the blanks again. So just listen to uh, the speakers, what they're saying, what is the flow, and how they are actually going one by one, you know. So it will go in a flow. It won't be jumbled up. So flowcharts are just like, uh, again, fill in the blanks or summaries. So uh, completely listen to these speakers really carefully. And I want everyone to use your earphones or headphones. OK? If you don't have it, quickly go and grab it now. OK? Yes. So we'll be doing flowchart now. In fact, I want you to take a, don't take a minute half a minute but you can read the instructions and all the uh, you know questions what is there or the content which is there in these boxes uh, you can go through it your half a minute starts now so guys always those who have joined today reading instructions is very very important i have been telling everyone that from past three days instructions are very important not only in listening even other modules also reading and writing too so without reading instructions don't even start doing the questions okay it's very important the reason is whether it is one word two words or three words see if it is three words definitely the answer can be two words and three words okay up to three words but what if the uh, instruction is only one word and you have written two words so then there will be a problem right so the examiner will not say, OK, this the answer is there in these two words. I'm going to give you the mark. No, because you didn't follow the instructions, uh, they're going to cut the mark. OK, so follow the instructions carefully and then go ahead. So I believe everyone have um, gone through the instructions and also the questions. So let's start now. OK, and after um the audio stops i want you to give your answers in the chat box itself like we were doing in the past three days right so in the same way so the audio starts now last week we looked at some general principles related to how free markets set prices for goods and services and today i'd like to look at some instances where things go wrong or where it might be difficult to tell what the fair price for a good or service is. So in the pandemic of 2020, many consumer habits changed, particularly how people bought and consumed more food at home. Many more people were cooking at home, which according to what we saw last week, means that demand for the type of products found in grocery stores went up. Just to give you an idea, in April of 2020, during the first spike of COVID-19 cases, food prices jumped 2.6%, 
which was the largest monthly increase in 46 years. For a more detailed view, prices for cereals, such as bakery products, went up by 2.4%, and prices for fruits and vegetables increased by 1.5%. And the kicker, prices for meats, poultry, fish, and eggs increased by a whopping 4.3%. One factor that contributed to the increase in the price of meat was that many processing plants had to shut down during the pandemic due to outbreaks of the virus among employees and the inability of management to provide safe working conditions so employees could return. So as I said previously, there was an increase in demand. Now we have a decrease in supply, a perfect storm when it comes to increasing prices. Okay, that was quite fast, and in the end, there was a lot of you know extra conversation, you know. So I will repeat it one more time. So please listen to it carefully and answer. Last week, we looked at some general principles related to how free markets set prices for goods and services. And today I'd like to look at some instances where things go wrong or where it might be difficult to tell what the fair price for a good or service is. So in the pandemic of 2020, many consumer habits changed, particularly how people bought and consumed more food at home. Many more people were cooking at home which according to what we saw last week, means that demand for the type of products found in grocery stores went up. Just to give you an idea, in April of 2020, during the first spike of COVID-19 cases, food prices jumped 2.6%, which was the largest monthly increase in 46 years. For a more detailed view, prices for cereals, such as bakery products, went up by 2.4%, and prices for fruits and vegetables increased by 1.5%. And the kicker, prices for meats, poultry, fish, and eggs increased by a whopping 4.3%. One factor that contributed to the increase in the price of meat was that many processing plants had to shut down during the pandemic due to outbreaks of the virus among employees and the inability of management to provide safe work so employees could return. So as I said previously, there was an increase in demand. Now we have a decrease in supply, a perfect storm when it comes to increasing prices. Okay, now uh, I want uh, you to give all the four answers in the chat box at the same time, okay? so. Give me your answers. You can type in the answers now in the chat box. So already Shweta has typed. So I want everyone else also to type the answers, all the four answers at the same time in the chat box, and then we'll discuss. Okay, very good. 
so we'll discuss the answers the first one is consumer habits okay the first answer is consumer habits changed isn't it so consumer habits is the right answer See, after um, getting the answer read with the answer the entire blank you will understand whether it is uh, you know getting it fit into it or not is it suiting properly or not okay so first answer is consumer habits and for many of you guys second answer you have typed it little wrong but others they have given you know types of products okay types of products or products or only food okay these all the answers are correct okay types of products or only products that means products types of products products or food any which is correct okay so then third one is cereals c e r e a l s because cereals went up to 2.4 percent she says isn't it so cereals is the answer third answer is and fourth one is obviously she was talking about meat meat uh, belongs to again protein so they have not given it directly meat here so it is 4.3 percent fourth answer is 4.3 percent okay any doubts in here guys shall we go to the next question Okay, let's go to the next question then. We'll do question number nine this time. Uh, okay, someone has typed something. Wouldn't types of products be considered three words? Yes, uh, actually types of products is three words. Type of products is actually three words. Yes, I'm really sorry guys. Products are or food these are all these are the only two words you can use i'm really sorry i was thinking like three words thank you for correcting actually yes types of products is wrong actually because you have to write uh, not more than two words here very good thank you so products or or food okay so because the demand for food in stores increased or the demand for products in stores increased. So products is the only correct answer. Very good. Yes. But they have also mentioned more than. No. No more than. Okay. <laughs> Actually no is missing there. There's a typing error. No more than two words or a number and or a number. Very good. Uh, is bakery products not correct? No, no. Uh, only products is correct. Okay, because the demand for the entire, not only one product, not only one bakery product, the other products also are there. So, demand for products. Uh, can you write food products? Uh, again, we are talking about uh, only the food thing, but yes, uh, it depends again. Uh, food in stores increase or food products is also correct actually you know it is satisfying two words and also it is giving the right sense okay demand for food products in store increase or even if you write demand for food in stores increased or demand for products in store increased no the grocery products is not is not correct i'm sorry <laughs> yes thank you guys let's go to the next one we'll do this time uh, yes these are again again uh, something like filling up gaps or it's a summary actually but you will do it like fill in the blanks like we have, we have done it before fill in the blank right or gap filling we call it as is it so summary let's see how to do this again and I'll, I'll give you a half a minute to uh, go through the instructions yes it's see here no more than three words okay that means the answer can be 
sometimes can be it can, it can be one word or two words or three words so mostly if it is saying no more than three words means you should not exceed more than three words but the answer sometimes can be two words or one word also and or a number okay yes let's see so you have a minute still there Okay, let's start. Intelligent Phone Services, Charles speaking. How may I help you? I've got a few problems with my account. Okay, what is your account number? Let me check. Or you can also give me your cell phone number complete with the area code. Okay, I do know that. It's 442. 442. 332, 332, 1782, 1782, right, can I just check that, 442, 332, 1782, that's it, and your full name, please, Sally Davids, thank you, I just need to check a few details for identification and security, please stay on the line as I check, that's okay, And what's your zip code? 76910. 76910. Elizabethtown, Washington? Yes, that's right. And the house number? It's an apartment, 101B Jackson Lane. Just a few more details. Can you give me your date of birth, please? I guess, 17th of May, 84. And one last question, I promise. Can you give me your maiden name or any other names you've used officially? Yes, it was Taylor. Is that T-A-Y-L-O-R? Yes, that's it. Quite a lot of security for a cell phone account. Okay, I believe uh, that's quite easy. Um, I, I uh, don't want, to, I don't have to repeat, repeat it, right? Will you guys give me the answers? You can type it in the chat box. Okay. Uh, Mansi has already given. Mansi, why did you type the entire number, buddy? See, only the missing number you need to give. And guys, when names come, these are proper nouns, right? Name, name of person, place, or a thing. So capital letters should be there. So some of you are giving without caps. Okay. Okay, good. So let's discuss. Uh, the first one is 332. Uh, only one person, I believe, they have given the entire uh, uh, number, this big number, but not required. Whatever it is missing, you can give it. So she was saying 442 and then uh, 332, then 1782, right? So the number which was missing in the blank is 332, okay? Double three two. Next, uh, second answer. Many of you have given David. It's not David. It's David's. 
Sally David's S. So the plurals also, plural singlers, listen to it carefully, guys. Okay. I'll just repeat that part. It's David's. Okay. She says David's, not David. Okay. Okay. One, Intelligent folks, therefore, you can also give me your cell phone number complete with the air. 332-332-1782. Right. Can I just check that? 442-332-1782. That's it. And your full name, please. Sally David. Thank you. I just need to check a few details for identification and Okay, so it's David's. I hope it's clear. Then third answer is Washington. So David's and Washington should be capitals. Uh, D in David's and Washington W should be capital. Okay. So third one is Washington. And uh, fourth one. 84 or 1984 both are correct she says 84 but usually you can write it as 1984 that means she say she's saying that 1984 okay because it can't be 2084 right <laughs> okay so 1984 and uh or 84 both are correct then taylor T A Y L O R. Uh, someone has given a wrong spelling also for Taylor. Ratan, Ratan J. It's not T A Y double O R, it's T A Y L O R. I know it's a typing error, a typo error. So be very, very careful when you, uh, if you're giving a computer based test, uh, take care of your spellings, guys. If the spelling is wrong, they're not uh, going to allow you mark. Okay. So be a little careful. So uh, I didn't get it, Anushka. What is it? And uh, no more than three. Yeah, that's why I didn't get it. So obviously, uh, all the answers are in one word. That means the answer can be one word, two word, and three words. Okay, and or a number. So they should. There's no confusion here. So if they say no more than three words, means the word limit is up to three words. But mostly the answers can be three words also. But here only one word answers are there. Okay. And with and numbers also. Yes, that is the reason. So no more than three words means the answer can be one word, two word and three words. Okay. I hope it is clear. So let's go to the next question. Okay. Okay, this time we'll do sentence completion. We were uh, we were just waiting for the sentence completion thing, right? So we have done summary before, and also the, uh, uh, before that we have done table. No, we have done uh, flow chart. Now we are going to do sentence completion. Let's see what these sentence completions are. So sentence completions are nothing but again like fill in the blanks. Here also you need to follow the word limit very strictly. No more than three words means the answer can be one word, two word, or three words. Okay, but here uh, number is not given. Uh, even number also is included. Included, so it is not given. No more than no more than three words and or a number. Okay, so it is not written here. So I'm just telling you before itself. Because again, you'll tell sir it is not there in the instruction. Yes. So no more than three words and or a number. Okay and let's start because there are only two questions we'll start the audio quickly there would be a lot of you know uh, extra things where they're saying but uh, catch when the, uh, the when they're coming to the answer sentence okay so that is the reason there are only two questions here but you need to catch it from where they're actually trying to say so let's see so the audio starts now. Hello, mom. Is that you? No, Sam. It's me. You're, the line isn't very clear. Can you say that again? Let me move. It's your aunt Jessica. 
Can you hear me now? Oh, yes, that's much better. Stay in that spot. Hey, Aunt Jessica, how are things with you? Things are great. How's your new place? It's really nice, actually. Oh, good. It's on a very quiet street, but not too far from public transport. It's a third floor flat with one bedroom and a bathroom, and then an open area with my kitchen and living and dining area. Sounds like it will work for you, but I haven't told you the best part. What's that? It's got a small terrace looking over the garden that's behind the building. Wow, that's great. And it's just big enough to have a few plants, a small table, and a couple chairs. I'm looking forward to having breakfast out there and doing some reading in the afternoon. So what's the address? It's 757 Appaloosa Drive, apartment 3B. 3E. No, 3B. B for banana. All right. And that's Appaloosa Drive? Correct. And the postcode? Give me a second. I think it's over here. Got it. Okay. Here it is. It's EX 166AM. The line is not so great. Is that EX 60? No, EX 16. Hmm. I don't think I know that area of town or that road. Well, it's not a main road. You do know the area, I think, because it's right off Holly Lane. Oh, so when can I drop by and see you? Well, I'll be completely moved in by Friday afternoon after work, so you could swing by on Saturday afternoon. I want to get everything moved in before that. So what would you like to do when I come up on Saturday? What time were you thinking of getting here? Well, it's about a 45-minute drive, so if I leave after my tennis game, I'll get up there by lunchtime. We could go to a nice restaurant around the corner. There's several nice cafes with outdoor seating. Sounds perfect. My treat. You're on, but just to let you know, I have to work that evening. I have to be out the door by about half past seven. All right. Oh, look who's here. Your uncle wants to have a word. I'll see you this weekend. Bye, Aunt Jess. I'll hand you over to him. Bye, Samuel. Okay. I believe there's a lot of extra talk before it. Okay. You can type in the answers now. It's quite easy, right? Yes. Please give your answers, guys. Uh, Anushka has typed only one answer. Why? Okay. Okay. Type both the answers at the same time, guys, everyone. Okay. Okay, very good, guys. So the first answer is Saturday afternoon. Some people have typed Saturday only, but it is actually Saturday afternoon. Okay. So if you write Saturday, you might not get a point. So here, no more than three words. Obviously, uh, they have, uh, you know, the answer is matching up to two words, isn't it? So when you can write two words here, and it is also giving you sense, why, why, why wouldn't you write? So the answer is Saturday afternoon. And then the journey time is approximately 45 minutes. So 45 is a number and minutes you can write it as a bird. And uh, only for uh, minutes and hours, you can write it as, as a short form, but don't take any risk, guys. So write 45, 45, am I new to yes. Okay. Write the full spelling. So even for the uh, 
and uh, names of the months, for example, January, February, March, April. You can write it as Jan, J N Jan, F E B. So you can write those short forms for uh, only for these uh, year, I mean uh, months in a year, and also days in a week. For example, Monday you can write it as M O N, or Sunday you can write as Sun, or Wednesday you can write it as Wed. But don't take that risk. If you feel that okay, I don't want to take that risk. Even I also uh, say that even though the IELTS accept these short forms only for these days of the um, uh, days in a week and also uh, months in a year, they accept these short forms in listening. But don't take that risk. Write the entire word. Okay. So in the same way, minutes, minutes are then all you know. They also they even uh, kilograms also kg. You can write it short form, but don't take the risk. Write the entire word, okay? Yes. Okay. Someone has this uh, saying. Uh, it says word in the question, so forty-five is wrong. No, uh, that's the reason. In the starting, I said no more than three words and or a number. It is not written over there. I said you have to even uh, write numbers also. Okay. You missed it, Deadpool. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go to the next question. Uh, let's go to this one. Okay, there are eight questions here. It's going to be a little long uh, audio. I want your utmost concentration and also complete participation uh, of, of everyone. And I want all the eight. Uh, answers it for the first tour, first time only. Okay, I'm going. I'm not going to repeat this audio, guys. I'm telling you, uh, please do it in the first go. This take it as a challenge. And here, no more than two words, and or a number. Okay, if any numbers comes, also you can take it. Okay, you can write it in numbers. Yes, one more thing. Uh, I got this, uh, uh, you know, thing from. Someone was asking, yes, this Deadpool was asking, right? Uh, if it is 45, uh, is it wrong? See, even numbers can also be written in uh, words. For example, 45, you can write it as F O U R T Y F I V E 5. That is taken again as, even if it is word more, more than the word limit, that, that it is taken as only one number. Okay? So you can do that too. So numbers, it is given in that way. So, for example, if the number is uh, 236, 236, so you can write 236, okay, in numbers. But even that number, you can write it as in uh, words. For example, 236, five words, isn't it? Actually, it is five words, but it is taken as one, one number only. Got it? So you can do that too, but no one will have that much of time to write these many words in listening because the audio goes on fast. So whenever num numbers comes, write it as numbers only. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So let's start this. I'll give you half a minute to go through these um, uh, eight questions. Please go through these, all the questions, read before the blank and after the blank, read the instructions, and then we'll start. Your time starts now. And believe me, there is a lot of uh, paraphrasing is involved here. The, these are not very direct, uh, you know, uh, utterings of the uh, sentences. It won't be direct sentence, whatever they have given there. So paraphrasing is there. So you have to get this. Let's see. Shall I start playing the audio, guys? Because you need to go through each and every question carefully. And even in the examination also, you'll be given half a minute to go through the questions. OK?
Okay, let's start. You will listen to a lecture describing skills for a productive workshop. Listen to the lecture and answer questions one to eight. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Oh, it's giving time. Good. Listen and answer questions one to five. Good afternoon. So in the first half of today's session, we've already discussed the prerequisites for a productive workshop. Let me summarize the features once again for you. And I would like you to jot them down for future reference. First, as with every other task, it's important to be clear about the objectives of your workshop. If that is clear, it will help you identify potential participants, organize your contents, make the schedule, and plan the budget for components, venue, and other requirements, such as giveaways for participants. Now, let's get to the actual task, conducting the workshop. To feel confident within, and to show it in your body language, and with your commanding presence, be there first. Getting there ahead of the participants puts you at ease and also gives you time to arrange all necessary tools, such as the projector, laptop, and even to go through your notes. It also gives you the chance to interact informally with the participants as they arrive, thus building a rapport for the session. A game or an activity to break the ice can be an exciting way to begin the session. Although it's a conventional method, it has not lost its charm. If you have the time, you can give each participant a chance for self-introduction along with a brief description of what they do. When you introduce yourself, which can be done first or later, speak with passion about yourself and your work. Mention the day's schedule, making sure you stick to it and assure them of useful takeaways throughout the session. Before you listen to the rest of the lecture, you have some time to look at questions six to eight. Now, answer question six to eight. If you deliver the contents for each session, which is usually two hours long, make sure you keep the audience engaged. Do not do all the talking in the room. Your speech and presentation may be engaging before lunch or in the first part of your workshop, but participants tend to lose interest in the post-lunch sessions or the second half. So be prepared to modify your plan if you realize your audience wants a break or a lighter session. These are to be taken care of while planning the contents before the workshop. Another essential aspect to be taken care of is housekeeping. Please ensure that the selected venue has functioning facilities, such as a clean washroom, air conditioning or heating as required, fire safety, hygienic restroom facilities, emergency exits, refreshments, and lunch or dinner arrangements. And one last important point is to establish some ground rules, such as mutual respect amongst participants, confidentiality, acceptance of differing viewpoints, accepting and putting forward constructive challenges, being present and attentive, punctuality, feeling responsible for learning and fair participation. Write these ground rules on the whiteboard or the screen for reference or clarification if and when required. Okay, 
that's a nice one okay so this is the actual test you know where they'll uh, you know give some pause and give some uh, time to go through the questions okay and then you can answer them so this is exactly how it goes in the examination even the before questions also were taken from uh, the real time examination of ielts it's not like something i made it up or we made it up okay so uh, guys do you want me to repeat it no right can you type it in the chat box do you want me to repeat it or yes or no what is it if any two to three people say yes you want me to repeat i'll repeat otherwise you can give me the answers so himani has given yes okay himani okay i we got i got more than 3 to 4 ss okay i'll repeat this audio guys uh please listen to it carefully and i want all correct answers at least 90% correct answers let's see you will listen to a lecture describing skills for a productive workshop listen to the lecture and answer questions 1 to 8 first you have some time to look at questions 1 to Listen and answer questions one to five. Good afternoon. So in the first half of today's session, we've already discussed the prerequisites for a productive workshop. Let me summarise the features once again for you, and I would like you to jot them down for future reference. First, as with every other task, it's important to be clear about the objectives of your workshop. If that is clear. It will help you identify potential participants, organize your contents, make the schedule, and plan the budget for components, venue, and other requirements such as giveaways for participants. Now, let's get to the actual task: conducting the workshop. To feel confident within and to show it in your body language and with your commanding presence, be there first. Getting there ahead of the participants puts you at ease and also gives you time to arrange all necessary tools such as the projector, laptop, and even to go through your notes. It also gives you the chance to interact informally with the participants as they arrive, thus building a rapport for the session. A game or an activity to break the ice can be an exciting way to begin the session. Although it's a conventional method, it has not lost its charm. If you have the time, you can give each participant a chance for self-introduction along with a brief description of what they do. When you introduce yourself, which can be done first or later, speak with passion about yourself and your work. Mention the day's schedule, making sure you stick to it and assure them of useful takeaways throughout the session before you listen to the rest of the lecture you have some time to look at questions 6 to 8 now answer question 6 to 8 as you deliver the contents for each session which is usually 2 hours long make sure you keep the audience engaged do not do all the talking in the room your speech and presentation may be engaging before lunch or in the first part of your workshop but participants tend to lose interest in the post lunch sessions or the second half so be prepared to modify your plan If you realize the audience wants a break 
or a lighter session. These are to be taken care of while planning the contents before the workshop. Another essential aspect to be taken care of is housekeeping. Please ensure that the selected venue has functioning facilities, such as a clean washroom, air conditioning or heating as required, fire safety, hygienic restroom facilities, emergency exits, refreshments and lunch or dinner arrangements. And one last important point is to establish some ground rules, such as mutual respect amongst participants, confidentiality, acceptance of differing viewpoints, accepting and putting forward constructive challenges, being present and attentive, punctuality, feeling responsible for learning and fair participation. Write these ground rules on the whiteboard or the screen for reference or clarification if and when required. Okay, so I want you to type in your answers in the chat box. Please type in your answers. I want all the answers, all the eight answers in one message from each person, okay? Not different, different messages with different, different answers. Okay. So, Anushka has given, Shweta has given already. I'm waiting for others. I want, I want everyone to give the answers. Okay. Because there is no negative marking in IELTS. So that means you can do the guesswork. I've been telling this from past three days. I know, but this is very important, right? So guesswork is very important. Fast, fast, fast. You have to discuss this. Okay, so uh, still people are typing, I believe. Okay, so the first answer is uh, like most of your ninety nine point nine nine percent. All your, all of you have given the first answer, the correct, the correct answer. That is objective, objectives actually. Okay, realizing objectives is the basic requirement. Okay, so objectives. It's not only one objective objectives okay then second one is participants see reaching before the participants obviously the speaker or the one who is conducting the you know giving the speech or someone he has to come for first right so reaching before the participants keep one calm and relaxed okay so participants is the answer for the second one okay then third one is uh, like most of you have given the right answer, it is building. Informal interaction at the onset helps in building a connection with the participants. Okay, so answer is building to build something, right? To build the connection with the participants. So we need to interact. So building is the answer for the for, uh, third one. And uh, yes, fourth one is conventional so ice breaking is a conventional way that still exists so answer is conventional okay i believe uh, you know these spellings right see convention spelling is c-o-n-v-e-n 
T-I-O-N-A-L, conventional. Okay. Next. Uh, fifth, also, like maximum, everyone has given the right answer. It's schedule. Schedule. S-C-H-E-D-U-L-E. -E, schedule. Then, sixth, also, uh, like uh, everyone has guessed the right answer. It is interest. Sixth is interest. The audience may not retain interest in the later half. That okay. So interest is the answer for the sixth one. Then seventh is like most of you have not given the right answer. It is actually facilities. Okay. Facilities in working condition. So there is a you know a phrase uh, he uses here. Uh, for working condition, he uses some uh, synonym to it, synonym phrase. Maybe engaging before lunch or in the first part of your workshop. But participants tend to lose interest in the post lunch sessions or the second half. So be prepared to modify your plan if you realize your audience wants a break or a lighter session. These are to be taken care of while planning the contents before the workshop. Another essential aspect to be taken care of is housekeeping. Please ensure that the selected venue has functioning facilities. So functioning facilities, functioning means working condition. So the answer which we need is facilities. Functioning facilities means obviously functioning means working condition facilities. So after writing this answer, you will read this sentence like this. The selected venue must have facilities in working condition. Obviously, it is making sense, right? So the answer is facilities. And last but not the least, the eighth one is, like everyone, most of you have given the right answer, which is ground rules. Ground rules. The set ground rules for the workshop must be displayed. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So ground rules is the answer for the eighth one. So, is it clear, guys? Any uh, doubts in this questions? Can you write functioning facilities? Obviously, functioning facilities means working condition. Again, it will become it will become like this. The selected venue must have functioning facilities in working condition. See, working condition means functioning facility. I mean, functioning, isn't it? It is still functioning, isn't it? So what is thought that we need to write here is facilities. OK? Uh, isn't exciting correct answer for the cohort one? The ice breaking activity is, no, it's still a you know traditional or a conventional way. That's what she said. Conventional way, it still exists, isn't it? So, um, though it is obviously it's exciting, that is the reason it is still continuing, isn't it? See, if people don't like something, it wouldn't exist, isn't it? So, uh, definitely, ice breaking is a great activity. Still, till now, many of the companies they still are the you know the. People who conduct seminars and all, they conduct these kind of ice breaking activities. So it's a conventional method. Okay. So conventional is the right answer. Okay. Can say forming instead of building. Why, why would you change the course of the word? Okay. Uh, already she was uttering building, isn't it? Uh, yes. So building you should write. So inf informal interaction on the onset helps in building. Building is the right. And that is the word she utters, isn't it? If she utters forming and, and that at that point of time, yes, we can uh, include that word also. But let's hear to that. Okay. Let's clarify here in itself. First, as with every other task, it's important to be clear about the objectives of your workshop. If that is clear, and plan the budget for components, venue, conducting the workshop. To feel confident within and to show it in your body language, 
and with your commanding presence, be there first. Getting there ahead of the participants puts you at ease and also gives you time to arrange all necessary tools, such as the projector, laptop, and even to go through your notes. It also gives you the chance to interact informally with the participants as they arrive, thus building a rapport for the session. So building is what she uses, okay? Yes. Can writing extra words like functioning be wrong answer? Yes, it's wrong. Because functioning itself means that it's still working condition, right? Yes. So after writing the word or after you fit the word into the gap, read the entire sentence once, you will understand it. So that is a better way to uh, guess whether this answer which I've written it correct or not. Okay, that is one tip I can give you after writing the answer or fitting the answer in the you know uh, the blank read the entire sentence okay okay guys we'll discover a few more questions tomorrow and we'll have a complete revision of what what all we have done in these four days okay so see you tomorrow guys and have a great evening thank you so much and you're all a nice people you know <laughs> see you tomorrow Ma'am, you can hand over. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Sir. Okay, so guys, if you have any queries related to anything else, as in the handout session, or whether you want to know about the recordings and all, just drop in your doubts in the chat box and I'll answer them for you. Okay, so I guess there are no quer queries from your side. So thank you so much for joining. We'll see you tomorrow for another session. Thank you.